Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Game Changer. I'm Mariam Zia. In today's program, we will be talking about the dire situation in Gaza, where more than 35,000 innocent Palestinians have now been killed uh, since the conflict began on October 7th. Uh, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has, uh, of course, described this situation in Gaza as an open wound that threatens uh, to infect the entire region. In today's program, we'll be talking about different dimensions of this conflict. Uh, of course, when we uh, talk about uh, international community response, uh, protests are happening across the world now. And uh, South Africa has once again uh, went to International Court of, uh, uh, Court of Justice uh, to, uh, to, of course, uh, to, uh, to take the case of Palestine and to halt the br brutalities that are happening now in Rafah and uh, the on going operation there. Uh, what will happen in that? We will be talking about that in today's program as well. And of course, when we talk about the internal dynamics of Israel, uh, a lot of pressure is now mounting on, uh, of course, Israeli Prime Minister, uh, as well as his war cabinet is now pushing him. And uh, one of the cabinet members, of course, uh, when we uh, talk about Benny Gens, it he has threatened to leave uh, the cabinet, war cabinet, if uh, Israeli Prime Minister does not come with a plan uh, by uh, June 8th. Uh, we will be talking about all these ramifications of uh, if that happens in the future and also we will be talking about the dimensions of the protest. Uh, now we are witnessing uh, another campaign by the social media users uh, in uh, of course in response to the brutalities of Israel that is block out, black, uh, block out uh, 2024. What is going to be the impact where celebrities who are not raising their voices uh, for the Palestinians polite are now being been uh, blocked by the social media users. Is this going to be having an impact uh, on raising voice on this issue? We will be talking about this as well. And of course, uh, different dimensions of this conflict, we will be talking about this. And we have very pertinent guest with us. Uh, in today's program, we'll, we are joined by Deputy Head of Mission, Embassy of the State of Palestine, uh, Mr. Nadir uh, Al-Turk. In today's program, welcome to the program. We're Thank also joined much. by Mr. Sheryar Khan, who is analyst. Welcome to the program. Uh, so. Um, uh, Mr. Turk, when we talk about the situation in uh, Gaza, uh, my first question would be very basic. Can you tell us about the recent developments and the humanitarian crisis that is unfolding in uh, Gaza as of today? Actually, the humanitarian uh, situation day by day become uh, more difficult, especially after the Israelis attack Rafah and control Rafah borders between Palestine and Egypt. Humanitarian aid, the main way to arrive to Gaza was throughout Egypt to Gaza. Right now, that was blocked completely. Mm -hmm. And uh, Israel is not facilitate the entry of that uh, humanitarian aid to Gaza. On the other hand, there is other ways throughout the Israelis area and the Israeli settlers attack the trucks which was are ho carrying the humanitarian aid and destroy it on the way when it is arrived from Jordan to Gaza, they, uh, they uh, block the road, destroy all the humanitarian aid, and not al allow them to reach to Gaza. Mm. This is the uh, humanitarian issues. Other hand, you know that right now Gaza, without hospitals, without uh, water supply, without uh, electricity supply, since 8th of October until now, mm. um, hospitals completely out of service. And if there is any hospital right now, it is working, it is working with very limited uh, facilities, don't have the enough equipment to give treatment for the, in, uh, for the injured people and to make the life survive by their limited resources. We hope so, the humanitarian aid going to be having the safe way to reach our people in Gaza as soon as possible mm. by the pressure of so international So uh, can you demand. elaborate on the impact the Rafa uh, land closure has had, especially when we talk about the wounded and sick uh, of, of course, people that are residing there because we know that the health infrastructure is largely destroyed. We are not only speak about, you know, injured people. We are speaking about uh, the people who have, have, you know, a dangerous kind of uh, disease mm -hmm. like cancer, 
Right. Uh, they are, don't have any kind of help because many of them usually take their treatment in, in uh, Al-Quds because the Israelis is not allowed to have radiation uh, equipment in Gaza. So we go to the coast. They are not, not, not have the ab ability to go there. Even the chemical drugs which are needed it is not available. We speak about people who have a problem with kidney. They don't have any facilities right now to take care of them because the Israelis destroy everything. And if we are speaking about young uh, children who are getting birth and they need to have special care, that all that equipment destroyed by the Israelis when they attack the hospitals, especially in the Shifa hospital. If you go to the Shifa hospital right now, it is like, you know, night mirror. All the buildings, all the equipment, all the uh, operation rooms destroyed completely. Right. And they do the same for all the hospitals. Right now, we gather before have 36 hospitals. Right now, about 34 hospitals out of service. Right, Only right. two hospitals are working. Right. And uh, Shahriyar, when we uh, talk about the dire uh, situation in uh, Gaza, of course, uh, the response of international community comes uh, in question and in picture as well. What do you make of the recent statement of uh, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, where he says that uh, this is an open wound that is going to be impacting uh, the stability of entire region? What do you see implications for the regional stability of uh, this ongoing conflict? Mm -hmm. So, Mariam, like the stability of the greater Middle East, the whole of it is already in question. The fact that uh, Israel is like resisting international pressure on a permanent ceasefire, the fact that Israeli state was already a, always against a two-state solution. So, they're not like coming up with a solution which would like make this whole situation tenable in the future anyways. So, right now, they might have like some objectives that they want to achieve, but I personally believe that their uh, objectives go far, far beyond the mm. counter-terrorism operations or the military operations they want to do. I personally think that they want to establish a permanent governance structure mm. post-war. That's what they're working towards. They want to make this area or geographical location physically unlivable or untenable for the local population over there. I personally believe this is like one of their uh, main objectives. Uh, the whole discussion around ethnic cleansing and genocide holds a lot of weight. International uh, criminal court uh, led by a lot of like different nations, mm. South Africa uh, and it's, a lot it's of like other countries. Uh, international court of justice at this exactly. point in time, right? And obviously they are all having a very watchful eye. But I also think that they are not doing enough. There could have been a lot more done now that even UN workers and UN vehicles are being attacked openly, uh, UN aid workers, international INGOs, local NGOs, they're like uh, workers internationally are losing their lives. I personally think that the world should be doing a lot more than just like par passing right, statements. Right, right. And uh, uh, let me take this question to Mr. Turk. Uh, when we talk about the world d doing more, we know that it's the fourth time that South Africa has uh, again pleaded uh, to International Court of Justice to take action against Israel um, uh, r in regards to the ongoing operation in uh, Rafa. Uh, how do you see? all this uh, situation and what are your uh, expectations from International Court of Justice at this point in time because we know that the provisional measures that were earlier uh, of course provided or given by uh, International Court of Justice have not been, uh, uh, Israel has not taken any heed to those. Uh, first of all we need, to, when you are looking for international society, we need to have two, uh, two sides. First, the leaders of the countries and the people of the countries. Mm. We see right now, most of the European countries, Western countries, United States of America, the people are protesting in the streets, in the universities, against the genocide, ethnic cleansing, uh, crimes against humanity, which is created by the Israelis against the Palestinian people in, in, in Palestine, especially in Gaza. On the other hand, the leaders of Western countries until now supporting Israelis' crimes against humanity by keep support their political position, keep support uh, them in the international organizations. Uh, Americans V to used in favor of Israel more than it is used in favor of the Americans. Mm. Uh, the aid of United, uh, United States of America to Israel is never stopped and it is increasing. And just a few weeks before the Americans' aid was 26 billion dollars to Israelis, 
17 billion out of it, it is mm. for military aid. Mm. And he knows, even Mr. Biden, he say he speak openly in the TV that he thinks so that the Americans whoopings was used in against the international law by the Israelis in Gaza. Mm. With that, the report of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of America going with make you not sure about that maybe we think maybe but we don't have enough evidence mm -hmm. that our mil our military aid was used in, um, in, uh, in against the international law this is from the other hand you see in the other hand uh, you see how the people of united states of america itself especially the students are proud and make their future professional and academic future in danger when they are protesting in favor of Palestine with right. that they are not care because they are feel and believe that they are supporting a humanitarian issue a humanitarian uh, cause, of cause and they are supporting their brothers and sisters right. in humanity because they believe that all of us as a human being, our brother and sister, because all of us are grandsons and daughters of Adam and Eve. Right. So this is their, uh, but on the right. other but hand, the leadership is not but enough. But Mr. Uh, Turk, at the same time, how do you see uh, the role of U.S.? Do you think it has evolved over time since uh, the conflict began on October 7? Uh, and what do you make of uh, the recent visit of a national uh, security advisor, uh, Mr. Jake uh, Sullivan, uh, to Israel? Uh, do you have any expectations in regards to the ceasefire actually, efforts? Actually, Jake Sullivan right now in Israel and he go to visit first Saudi Arabia and go to yes. uh, Israel not to speak about ceasefire. He try to make something before the election for the non relation relationship between Saudi Arabia and Israelis. Saudi Arabia leadership very clear. This can't be done without getting Palestinian state with uh, Jerusalem as it is capital on the on the ground is become on the ground this is the, the, the thing the response of netanyahu just two days before he said there's going to be no palestinian state so the different ch the changes in the in, in, in opinion it is still huge between leadership of Saudi Arabia and Zionist leadership. Mm -hmm. So according to that, I think the, uh, Mr. Sullivan's visits will not be succeed as before Mr. Blinken visits, many visits, and Mr. Biden visits to Israelis. It's gonna, not going to be succeed. Because, right. because I will go again that the Israelis agenda right now, it is very clear. Displaced Palestinian people from Gaza, out of Gaza to uh, replace them with, with, with Israelis and Zionist settlers. If they succeed in that, the next step going to be displaced Palestinian outside of West Bank to Jordan. Later on, they're going to displace, transfer Palestinian people who are holding Israeli citizenship outside of Palestine because Israel was established as a state with many lies. One of the lies that Palestine it is empty land without people, for mm. people without land, according to the Zionists, came to Palestine. Right. If they succeed in that, actually, this is going to be the future of our region. This is going to be the map of the greater Israel, right. which is going to include... Right, of course, of course, uh, uh, of course, this is very important. Many of Arab countries mm -hmm. going to be part, even part of Turkey, going to be part of Israel, greater Israel. So, humanity, Muslim Ummah, Arabs Ummah need to take action on the ground to keep first American under Russia, because they are the great supporter for right, the Israelis. Right, of course, of course, that is very important. And uh, make Israeli leadership under Russia to follow international rules, international law, and, be, and we need to put our hands by hand to make humanity more human. This of is course, that, that is, of course, uh, very important when we uh, talk about this. But at the same time, we will be talking about the role of Arab states later in the program. Uh, but when we uh, talk about uh, the situation within Israel, uh, there is a lot of pressure now mounting on uh, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu as well. Uh, of course, when we uh, talk about the statements from many of his uh, war cabinet members, uh, they are now anxious uh, about this ongoing conflict. Uh, so, what do you make of the statements by, uh, of course, uh, one of the cabinet mem members, uh, Benny uh, Gonitz, uh, in this, um, uh, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, Benny Gens, uh, 
um, uh, has made the statement. Can you elaborate on uh, the six points uh, that have been outlined by uh, Benny Gantz? And what do you make of uh, these points uh, for Israel and mm -hmm. uh, for the future of this conflict? So, Mariam, like if you look at it from a macro uh, top level view of this whole situation, right now, uh, Netanyahu government in, is in a state in which there is like thinking more in the lines of self preservation and there is like more discussion on what the exactly the objectives of this operation or like this one sided war in, a, in a, uh, Gaza is. What are the objectives that they want to achieve? Initially, the objectives were very different. Overall, the goals was the security of the Israeli state. Now, after like all of this time has passed, is the Israeli s state more secure or is there overall greater insecurity in the mm. whole region? So that objective has not been met. Mm. Right now, the Netanyahu government is doing a lot more to pacify the right wing uh, uh, entities in their own government and they are getting pressurized from them into doing a lot more into in mm. Gaza. Now, what more can they do other than destroying the whole uh, infrastructure from there? What are they going to like, but achieve But when we uh, talk about the day after, do mm -hmm. you think that is going to be existing in near future? Because if they are going to be destroying everything, then uh, what is the meaning of day after? And so I'll take the same question to Mr. Tarek as yeah. well. So this is exactly what the day after basically means. To make this geographical location so untenable and so unlivable, that all of these people who are like already displaced now mm -hmm. at Rafa and they're like this 800,000 of them have been displaced again due to these uh, operations and the bombing that is being done by the Israeli government. Mm -hmm. So how long will it even take for reconstruction to take place? Mm -hmm. It will take years and years and years to build that infrastructure. So what will happen in the meanwhile? And I agree that the greater idea or the greater objectives are like far beyond the day after the uh, this like uh, person that you mentioned from the Israeli right Benigans. wing. Benny Gantz. Benny what, what are they demanding? They are basically demanding that tell us what the governance structure will be in the day after. Mm. Because we are not going after the two state solution anyway. So what sort of governance structure will be there after this uh, uh, you know war ends? Who will be controlling this area? They're not looking up for a two-state solution. Mm. In fact, they he will not has be outlined agreeing. six points uh, six in points that as well. regard. So in that well. six points, what they're asking Netanyahu is that after this like war ends, who will be taking control of this territory? Uh, will it be the Palestinian Authority? Will they basically let Hamas take over again? Or will there be a third-party system that they want? And that's the options that they're asking from the Netanyahu that give us a, a structure. And the support from the U.S., uh, you know, Jake Sullivan going to various different countries. So I think th this is like one agenda item on their uh, roster as well, in which they want to take the Middle Eastern countries or the GCC countries on board on what the future of this area would be like. Right. But without the uh, taking the will of the Palestinian people on board, I don't think this will be going in any positive direction. Right. And uh, Mr. Turk, what do you make of these internal divisions within Israeli uh, war cabinet that, uh, that was, of course, we know uh, was established after uh, October 7th? Uh, and, of course, uh, Benny Gantz's uh, ultimatum uh, to Netanyahu uh, in this regard. And also, uh, what are your um, expectations or what do you make of whole situation in regards to the day after that we are uh, so much here? about now? Actually, Mili Gantz giving six points. Mm. Uh, six uh, objectives to be achieved until the 8th of June. Mm. If the Israelis didn't succeed to achieve that objective since 7 of October until now, mm. do you think they have the opportunity to achieve it until 8th of June? Mm. It is impossible. This is first. And, uh, and, and, actually and what potential outcomes mm. might arise in okay. case okay. this I deadline I has will, already I will, approached? I will go to that point. Uh, Netanyahu, he give uh, answers of all the six objectives which is Benny Gantz asked for to be achieved. He was very clear, very strong in his answer to him. Because actually the problem right now, it is not only Israelis, Palestinians. Mm. It is there is a problem, Israelis, Israelis. Mm. Right now, who is going to lead in the next, uh, in the future? Uh, Netanyahu right now is not fighting against the Palestinians. He is fighting to continue 
own power continue as a prime minister because he knows uh, clearly that they one after the war he going to the court and he going to the jail because mm -hmm. he have four for corruption files over that the failure of 7 of october he will bear the price of that so he goes for the jail mm -hmm. For sure. So he's fighting to be out of the jail, not fighting only to kill more Palestinians. So he's using our blood, our suffer, to continue in his position as a prime minister. Right now, Benny Gantz is working for, you know, uh, for the next election, that he is more wise, more, uh, you know, uh, better than Netanyahu to lead the Israelis. Mm. For the six points which Mr. Gantz is, uh, uh, mentioned, and who is going to lead in Gaza later on, who is going to control Gaza, the Israeli army last week was very clear. There's going to be no military rule in Gaza by, by the Israeli army. They don't have the power to do that. And there's going to be no civilians, Israeli power to rule in Gaza, because it's not safe for them. So again and again, the next day for them, it is the only solution is displace Palestinians out of Gaza, this is the only solution for the Israelis. Mm. And for us as a Palestinian, the day one after the war, it is only independent Palestinian, independent state, with Jerusalem as its capital, right of return for Palestinian refugees, which they are voting for their rights according to International Resolution 194 since 1948 until now. Right now, the international society are in uh, real. Uh, exam for how much they are active to keep the security and international peace. Mm. They are succeeding in that of the, uh, or not. Until now, actually, what we are seeing, it is mass failure of international society to keep security and peace for the world. Right. To, to solve all the issues, it is very simple. Activate the international resolution, which is giving the Palestinian their rights to have their own state, with use of capital, right to the return of Palestinian refugees to their own properties in Palestine mm -hmm. since 1948. This is one uh, phase one. Second things is need to be reached that activate the international resolution against the Israelis, because Israelis are not over the international law. All the countries, right. all the nations under the international right, but, law. But, but still, even if uh, those laws are activated, it would take years for even International Court of Justice uh, to, of course, conclude the hearings on this case. Uh, Actually, of International uh, Court of Justice, even if they take a decision, their decision is non-bending decision. Right. So non it is not having the ball. So, so if, only we are talking about moral and, and ethical. We grounds. have more than 800 resolution in favor of Palestine, mm. and until now Israelis obey none of it. And we we need to mention one thing is very important. As long as Americans leadership using the veto and cover the back of the Israelis, nothing going to be have a progress on the ground in the international law for in favor of Palestine. You see, when you go to the Security Council for getting full membership of Palestine state in the United Nations, we get 12 membership of the Security Council agreed and support our request. The, the American veto was there and make that fail. We go to the uh, General Assembly of United, Na uh, Uni United Nations, we get 143 countries with us hmm. and only few countries against our membership in the United Nations. If you look into that case, this is the same case for the 800 resolution in favor of Palestine. Americans always there to support Israelis' the crimes against the humanity. And they are forgetting that as a, f a member of the Security Council, the one of their many duties is to s keep security and peace in, in all the world, not supporting crimes against right, the United right, by and, Israel, created and, by Israel. And of course, Shayar, when we uh, talk about the international order and uh, specifically when we talk about this case, uh, like Mr. Turk also alluded to, uh, overwhelming, uh, of course, support that was given to uh, uh, Palestine uh, when we talk about this. But of course, uh, it remains in question. Uh, the genocide case uh, is a is again uh, in uh, International Court of Justice. Do you think there are go going to be some uh, ramifications for Israel in this regard? Because now we are at this point in time uh, seeing a lot of countries um, 
planning or already cutting uh, economic ties with Israel, uh, for example, Turkey is an example. So do you think that uh, this is going to be impacting uh, Israel's economic uh, strength in future? So Mariam, the way the whole international architecture is like framed is in, in a way that Israel can continue not accepting any international resolutions, even the uh, decisions of the International uh, Court of Justice are non-binding. But as long as the US provides them with uh, economic and military aid, mm. I don't think they really bother but or like but care don't about. You think, uh, but yeah. are there going to be any consequences for Israel for ignoring uh, those provisional measures that were, uh, of course, put forward by International Court of Justice? Truthfully told, I don't think there will be. Because, you know, right now the whole international framework, the way it is operating and the way international human rights conventions, international law is being trampled in the geographical location of uh, Gaza, this is like a, a blatant reminder. And the world is like moving more towards a might is right philosophy rather than the respect for international human rights law or, or international law whatsoever. What we are now basically observing is that if there was any iota of uh, morality that Israel was basically talking about, Israel has basically lost all that standing in the world. It is facing a lot of like isolation, especially from the global south, but its historically close allies are also now distancing themselves from their uh, you know, actions. Uh, we see that uh, a lot in Europe. Obviously, the governments are supporting the Israeli government. When, when we talk about the people in these countries, they're like coming out in thousands and millions and they have basically told what, they, what their decision is. Mm. Now, if these like countries are democratic and they're like getting pressure from the grassroots level to their leadership, the grassroots people on ground, the students, the uh, activists, the you know, people on ground, they have like given their very clear message mm. that they're against this uh, uh, one-sided uh, military operation. They're against the genocide of the Palestinian people and they're against this whole idea. So uh, right, rightfully right. Uh, like speaking. Of course, but, uh, but uh, in uh, practice, we are not going to be wit witnessing any consequences for Israel. Uh, but Mr. Turk, when uh, we talk about uh, this situation unfolding, let's talk about, of course, on ground uh, hostilities that are happening and unfolding each day. Um, can you tell us how UNRWA workers are uh, uh, working in these conditions now? And we're also seeing a lot of doctors going back to their countries because of uh, the conditions uh, in, uh, in Gaza and, of course, uh, surrounding territories. Uh, how difficult it is uh, for the local doctors to proceed in those conditions? Actually, we raise our hats for uh, their hard work with very limited resources to help our people there. Because, as I mentioned to you before, they don't have any equipment, mm. any machines to use it to make, to do their message in, in life, to give a uh, second opportunity to live for their patients. Uh, the doctors are going back because there is limited resources and there is right now there is no hospital to work there, there is no clinics to give any uh, service for the people there. Uh, according to that, they are going back and some of them they're going back to their country and co come back again mm. several times. Mm. Some people from uh, Arab countries, Muslim countries and even mm. Europeans and uh, Americans go and come back again to Gaza. This is the issue. Uh, second thing, I like just to take care uh, of something of my brother mentioned there about, uh, we speak about it before, that the difference between government and the people in Western countries, which is make a uh, question, giving us the rights of the people, the humanity, to question the Western countries' democracy. Is mm. it real democracy or not? How it becomes that the people are supporting Palestinians and the leadership are supporting the Israelis mm. and they're still ruling and have the power to rule the country when they are not uh, presenting the interest of their own people, but they are, in, 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 uh, they are supporting and uh, service and uh, the uh, other country, foreign country interests, the Israelis and their crimes against the humanity. This is one thing. Second thing, usually the Americans and the Israelis try to market Israelis 
that they are one of the most uh, developed country in the region with high, high, tec high technology and that. The protest of the uh, American students in the universities shows us very clearly that the Israeli technology actually it is copy and based of the American technology by the research center, the American research centers and the uh, cooperations agreements and the cooperation programs mm -hmm. between the Israelis and that universities. When we speak about billions of dollars to make Israelis technology higher by the using the Americans' money and Americans' research centers and, and Americans' uh, universities. This is other things. We speak about safety of Israel, on the other hand. After 7 of October, Israelis understood the lesson that military power not give safety. Mm. The getting from the Americans, more only from Americans, not from other countries, the Western countries like Germany, Italy, France, British, they get from Americans only since 1948 until now more than $300 billion only for military aid. With that, we see the on 7th of October, technical, uh, uh, technical and uh, military, military, and, military and even security, hmm, okay, failure. and intelligent failure, of course. which means that money and power which, and military aid not make Israelis uh, more stronger and more secure. Right. Only peace, only peace, only Palestinian state, right. only Palestinian state, only giving the Palestinians their own rights can give security, not only for the Israelis, not only for the Americans, but for all the world. This right. is the only thing. Second thing, please, I've in that point, I like to mention small, uh, uh, last point in that issue, that for uh, the Israelis right now, after this failure, uh, they need to look more and more to follow the international rules, because this is the only solution for any people in the world. We need to cooperate together in our region to make better future for the next generation, mm. because this failure we will keep us going from circle of blood to next circle of blood. The only so, uh, solution is peace and stability for all the people, for all the region, to, for all the world. This is the only solution. Right, of course, this is the only solution and it is very important to address the root cause of the conflict. Uh, but coming back to the protests that are happening uh, across the world now, and now it has, uh, um, of course, expanded to the digital space as well in the form of uh, digital guitars. Uh, uh, of course, a campaign that we are witnessing uh, for uh, blocking out the celebrities who are not voicing uh, their concerns for the hostilities that are happening in uh, Gaza. Uh, how do you link this digital space, uh, of course, protest? protest uh, to the larger uh, protests that are happening in the campuses and all over the world. So Maria, what we are witnessing is the democratic evolution of the social media. Now social media or traditional media cannot be controlled by one or two media houses mm -hmm. sitting on the top and like controlling the narrative on the ground. Mm -hmm. The narrative now comes from the grassroots and it basically gives direction <coughs> to the policy makers. And I agree with the, my friend over here that there is a huge gap between what is being felt on the ground mm. and what the policy is being made on the mm. top. Now when we talk about uh, these grassroots movement, one is the student movement that is like going on across US uh, campuses and various campus campuses across the Middle East as well as Europe as well. So that's movement against uh, you know the Israeli atrocities, that's student led. Now when it comes to the BDS movement that has always been there as a source of mm. uh, pressure on all companies that mm. deal with the state of Israel, that uh, BDS movement has taken a lot of like, uh, you know, it's expanded. And now a lot of like people who are ge generally considered influencers, mm. who have a public profile mm. and whose opinion matters, mm. they are being pressurized by the activists and people on ground on to take tougher positions mm. on how Israel is dealing with this situation. Of course, and how do you see the comparisons uh, that are being made by this uh, digital Gutan movement uh, mm -hmm. to the French Revolution? Uh, of course, because there are a lot of people who mm -hmm. are making mm -hmm. these comparisons. Well, the French Revolution was like very different. It was a whole issue between the uh, you know church and the state and like people rising. It was very, very violent in nature. But like this is a non-violent movement. And that is what the beauty of this whole movement is. 
that the people on the ground they pressurize the celebrities and mm -hmm. uh, by blocking these, them by blocking them and they basically by reducing their reach so they will also feel a financial crunch but the financial crunch might not be that much but the moral uh, pressure on mm -hmm. these celebrities mm -hmm. would be a lot more mm -hmm. because once the, and there are uh, a lot of like celebrities in the western media and uh, globally as well who mm -hmm. have like taken very tough stances mm -hmm. and they have basically sacrificed a lot of work uh, that they get in their uh, respective economies and industry by taking or like siding with the Palestinian cause so there's like a lot more pressure that still can be made and this is like one way of basically pressurizing people who have a public persona or a public voice that they should also voice uh, in favor for Palestine. Mm -hmm. So that is what this movement is about. It's not about like blocking a celebrity or like, you know, so it's about a, putting a moral pressure mm -hmm. on people who have influence, who have a voice, who have a following. And uh, this is what the movement is about. It's very closely linked to the BDS movement as well. A lot of like international corporations who have Israeli linkages mm -hmm. are losing a lot of profits because of the BDS movement. Initially, there was like discussion that right. by boycotting all of these corporations, will that even like make a dent into their profits? Right, but in, and uh, now in it this is. movement, we are talking about, of course, the celebrities and influencers mm -hmm. and how they could have made an impact uh, but uh, maybe they are not, uh, of course, playing their role. And all this happened after Met Gala, wh where we see that uh, not a lot of celebrities were raising their voices. And there was, of course, concerns about the disconnect that these celebrities are having uh, from the situation in uh, Gaza. But lastly, as we are concluding the program, what are uh, the potential scenarios for the future of Gaza if this uh, conflict uh, continues like it's now? Uh, hopefully, this uh, conflict is going to be end very soon with uh, getting the Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. Uh, and for rebuild Gaza, the right now the scenarios speak about 10 to 30 years to rebuild Gaza. But I think as a <coughs> Palestinians, uh, I believe, like I believe in Allah, I believe in my own people, that can be uh, shorter than this. Okay, we're not taking mm -hmm. that long I can see time. you're getting emotional. Yes, because, you know, our people uh, in 1948 lost their uh, homeland, lost all their, uh, you know, uh, capital assets, economical assets. With that, we're still here, we're still fighting, we still, uh, you know, struggle for our freedom, for our independence. Even we are facing right now uh, Americans, British, the, the superpower country right. in the world. With that, we're still here. Uh, right. This is one thing. Second thing, I think, if we are asking our uh, friends, our brothers in China, companies to come and rebuild Gaza, I think they can finish everything with about three years. Okay? And the rebels of Gaza are going to be to, uh, used, inshallah, to rebuild uh, better future for humanity, not only for the Palestinians. Right. Uh, our blood going to be lighting the freedom and liber uh, liberty for not only for the Palestinian, for our region, it's going to be lighting the road of freedom for all the humans. Right, indeed. And indeed. you are speaking in your program uh, address under the game changer. The main ch game changer going to be the Palestinian struggle for, uh, for peace independence and freedom right. and we see again and again the huge change in public opinion around right. the world right. and, and we see the students right. how they m protest in favor of Palestine in the United States of America and make evidence more and more evidence about how is all of us our brother and sister in humanity for all the world this is why I'm optimistic about that things and again and again, like I believe in Allah, I believe in our own people. They are having the power to continue their living after this crisis, after this tragedy. And we are like we lose all the things in 1948. Right now, we will just, uh, Israelis destroy everything we own in Gaza, but we can rebuild Gaza again and again, okay, in very short time to be getting better and stronger future for our next generation. Right, right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Very Nadir al Turk, for joining us in today's program and for your valuable opinion. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Shahyar Khan, for joining us in today's uh, program.
Right, and of course, when we talk about the ongoing conflict in Gaza, the resilience and courage of uh, people and those affected by the uh, by the conflict remind us of the urgent need for ceasefire in Gaza. That's all from Game Changer, Changer tonight. Take care. Allah Hafiz.